Matthew 21, verse number 10. From the New International Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 Preacher, as I read this text, <laughs> Brother Todd, I began to think back to my youth. And I was reminded of a New York MC by the name of LL Cool J. All right. I believe his name is James Todd Smith. Amen. River Slater, he had a song called I'm Bad. And <clears throat> in the end part of the song, he talks about how he enters the center. And he says, when I enter the center, y'all know the words. They say, yo, yo, there he go. He was so well respected amongst his peers. And so well respected, I guess, around Bay Shore. Amen. That when people saw Brother LL, they knew who he was. But so this reminds me of Jesus as he enters Jerusalem. My God. The people were so stirred. That means they were excited about Jesus that they simply said, yo, yo, there he go. <laughs> so a few moments or today, I want to encourage you from the subject. Yo, yo, there he go. Tell your neighbor, say, yo, yo, there he go. It's Y-O, comma, Y-O, there he go. <laughs> yo, yo, there he go. As we delve deeply into the events surrounding the resurrection, my brothers and my sisters, we should feel a sense of triumph and a sense of victory. Amen. As we unravel the layers of Jesus' sacrifice, there should be joy, unspeakable joy. Yes. My brothers and my sisters, it is clear that by our very nature, <coughs> we are undeserving of God's grace. Amen. Despite this unworthiness, we must not only walk in faith, uh -huh. but cultivate and nurture a growing faith. Amen. Relying, my brothers and my sisters, not on sight, mm -hmm. but on the confidence in what we hope for and in the assurance of what we don't see. Mm -hmm. Due to our confidence, in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see as it pertains to Christ. We understand that the Son of Man has triumphantly entered into our hearts. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, the entry of the Son of Man, we know is a gift and it is a fresh start individually and at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
This gift, my brothers and my sisters, has been bestowed upon us graciously by the almighty God. But as we reflect on this gift, Brother Leon, it should invoke joy and a spirit of victory that leads us to worship Jesus. Because Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, has, has broken through the barriers of our existence to the core of our hearts. See, the songwriter encourages us with these words. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy all of my soul like sea billows roll, you know the words, since Jesus came in to our hearts. Sister Patty, this is profound. Because when Jesus comes in to our hearts, it should instill in us a deep sense of gratitude and reverence. As we grasp the significance of his grace and the transformative power of his resurrection, we are compelled to embrace our individual roles in his grand design with humility and purpose. Furthermore, joy and triumph we experience day in and day out since Jesus has entered in and we have allowed Jesus to permeate our existence so we can fulfill the purpose that he has outlined for us today. But see, as we reflect on the resurrection and its profound implications in our lives. It should inspire us to walk by faith and live out the purpose that he has designed for us and the way we worship him because we're thankful for what he's done. We worship him with a grateful heart. We worship God with a grateful heart no matter what we are enduring. We may be enduring some struggles on today, but we worship him with a grateful heart. We may have tear-stained pillows, but we worship him with a grateful heart. Friends may forsake us, but we worship him with a grateful heart. See, the songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. My brothers and my sisters, all of the ground is sinking sand. Matthew, the tax collector, is traditionally believed to be the author of the gospel of Matthew in the New Testament. Understand that the original manuscripts do not mention the author's name. Historical documents from the early church provide significant insight into the authorship of this gospel. The earliest traditions of the church were unanimous when they stated that Matthew, also known as Levi, Amen. the former tax collector, was the author of this book. And we understand that the gospel of St. Matthew 
emphasizes the teachings and the ministry of Jesus Christ, highlighting his role as the Messiah and the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. Matthew's gospel serves as an evangelistic tool crafted for his fellow Jews. Matthew desired that his fellow Jews recognize Jesus Christ as the long-awaited Messiah. Furthermore, the gospel M.I.T. Smith clearly reveals to the Gentiles that salvation through Jesus was also for them. For the Jewish believers, Matthew's gospel provides encouragement to stand firm in the midst of opposition. And for the Gentiles, he aims to let them know that they need to have a clear understanding that their place in God's kingdom is 100% secure. Yes, it is. Our key verse, we see that the people were excited when Jesus entered the city. Tell your neighbor, yo, yo, there he go. In our text, Jesus and his followers were drawing closer to Jerusalem. As they approached the city, they made a pit stop at Bethphage on a hill called the Mount of Olives. At this point, Jesus summoned two of his followers and instructed them to quickly go into the town. Yes. Amen. He told them that when they entered the town, they would find a donkey tied there with its coat. And he instructed his followers to bring them to him. However, Jesus also advised the followers that if anyone were to question them, they should say that the master had need of the animals. And they would be sent, my brothers and my sisters, at once. This was to fulfill the prophecy found in Zechariah 9 verse 9. And it states, Rejoice greatly, daughters of Zion. Shout, daughters of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Jesus' followers went as Jesus instructed. Let me make a side note here. We need to go as Jesus Jesus instructs us to go. And they brought the donkey and the coat to Jesus. And they laid their coats on them. Once the coats were secured, Jesus sat on them. And he began to move towards Jerusalem. And as Jesus approached Jerusalem, many people, my brothers and my sisters, Showed their respect. Yes, they did. For Jesus, by spreading their coats on the road. Amen. And also, we know there were other folk yes. who cut palms yes. from the trees 
and they spread the palms across the road. The people, my brothers and my sisters, were walking ahead of Jesus and behind him, and they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hosanna in the highest yes. heaven. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, as I stated before, the people, Sister Rose Frank, they were filled with excitement and great expectations. I want us to understand as we begin this pilgrimage towards the resurrection that when Jesus enters our lives we should be filled with excitement. When Jesus enters our lives we should have great expectations. Amen. When Jesus yes. enters our lives, we should be filled with gratitude, not attitude. Yes. Amen. When Jesus enters our lives, yes. we should be filled with joy. Yes. We should be filled with a sense of triumph yes. and a mindset of victory. And when Jesus enters our hearts, we must have a posture of praise. Yeah. My Lord. A spirit of adoration yeah. and a heart filled with worship. Amen. Understand on today, my brothers and my sisters, there are going to be times when we are challenged. But understand, our wilderness is not permanent. It's just temporary. Yeah. There are going to be aggravations and they're going to be disappointments but we must comprehend our wilderness is not permanent it's just a temporary situation weeping may endure for a night but at 12.01 a.m. we realize that our wilderness is not permanent it's just a temporary situation. Amen. See the songwriter says, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, we come. O Lamb of God, we come. So with all of that said, how should we as believers respond when Jesus enters our lives. Point number one, when Jesus enters our lives, there should be a sense of gratitude. Hallelujah. And there must be a sense of joy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Two different words we understand. Hallelujah. That we are undeserving vessels. And when Jesus, by his grace, chooses to enter our lives and our hearts, he enters in despite our unworthiness. Hallelujah. When we think about our unworthiness, and we're not going to praise our unworthiness, but we need to know that we are unworthy. But when we think about the fact that we are unworthy and Jesus enters in, there should be thanksgiving. There should be gratitude. And there should be joy. And this stems from what he has done, but it's primarily because of who he is. Point number one, there should be a sense of gratitude. Yes. But not only should there be a sense of gratitude, point number two, when Jesus invades our surroundings, 
there should be a feeling of triumph and a feeling of victory. There should be an acknowledgement of the victory that Jesus brings and represents in our lives. Amen. When Jesus boldly invades our personal being, there should be an understanding that through his power, we are victorious. Amen. Do I got some victorious folks up in here? Amen. The sense of victory should create, I want you to hear this, the sense of victory should create a triumphant atmosphere in our lives and check this out and in our church Amen. leading us to live a life of holiness and righteousness tell your neighbor holiness is still right we live a life of righteousness and holiness with excellence that brings God glory. Amen. So there should be a sense of gratitude. There should be a feeling of triumph and victory. But last but not least, when Jesus steps through the threshold of our lives, it should create an atmosphere of worship and complete submission. Due to our recognition of Jesus' triumphant entry into our lives, our gratitude should automatically and immediately create an atmosphere of thanksgiving that fosters worship. We understand that worship entails thanking God for who he is while praising him for what he has done. All within an environment of obedience and submission to his will and his way. So there should be a sense of gratitude and joy. There should be a feeling of triumph and victory. There should be an atmosphere of worship and an atmosphere of submission. My brothers and my sisters, as we begin this pilgrimage towards the resurrection, we must realize there is victory when we let Jesus in. Misfortune and tragedy may cause us difficulties. We must realize there is victory when we let Jesus in. There may be temptations and there may be trials but HNBC, we must realize that there is a victory when we let Jesus in. See, the songwriter says it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength from day to day it will never ever ever lose its power HMBC this lets us know that Jesus saw us and Jesus bought us with his redeeming blood isn't it good to know that when we were lost and doing our own thing, Jesus saw us and he bought us with his redeeming blood. 
with the cards were stacked against us. Jesus saw us and Jesus bought us with his redeeming blood. When we felt like the enemy was winning, Jesus saw us and he bought us with his redeeming blood. When the wounds of betrayal had us broken, Jesus saw us and he bought us with his redeeming blood. Sister Regina, sometimes the storms of life rage all around us. There are days when fear threatens to consume us. There are moments, my brothers and my sister, when doubt clouds our mind. But Jesus saw us and he bought us with his redeeming blood. When loneliness begins to creep into our hearts, when failures weigh heavily on our mind, when our trust has been shattered into fragments, Jesus saw us and Jesus bought us with his redeeming blood. See, the songwriter says, must Jesus bear the cross alone in all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there is a cross for me. My brothers and my sisters, we must understand that we all fall short of the glory of God. But we thank God for the willingness of Jesus. In life, there are challenges that lead to our frustration. But we thank God for the readiness of Jesus. Pain, my brothers and my sisters, is inevitable as we run this race called life. But we thank God for the preparedness of Jesus. There's triumph when Jesus enters in. But we thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, towards the crimson flow. Many arrows pierced my soul from without and within. But my Lord leads me on and through him I must win. Today, my brothers and my sisters, we may be struggling, but when Jesus enters in, we will be triumphant. Our hearts may need mending right now, but when Jesus enters in, we will be triumphant. We may be dealing with sickness in our bodies, but when Jesus enters in, we will be triumphant. Challenges may test our will. Chaos may seem greater than the calmness. Mistakes of the past may haunt our present. When worry clouds our mind, we must remember that when Jesus enters in, we shall be triumphant. See, my brothers and my sisters, when Jesus enters in, we are more than conquerors. When Jesus enters in, we are on the winning team. When Jesus enters in, we become a bona fide success. When Jesus enters in, we become an influence in a dying world. When Jesus enters in, we are glorious and spectacular. When Jesus enters in, we will come out victorious. See, we may feel all alone and dark clouds may loom But if we follow him, if we are in him, and we come through him, there's triumph on the other side of your struggles. If you're broken, there's triumph on the other side 
of your struggle. If you're sick, yeah, there's triumph on the other side of your struggle. If you need a friend, there's triumph on the other side of your struggle. If life has beat you down, there's struggle and triumph on the other side of your struggles. If you've been lied on, if you've been talked about, don't worry. There's triumph on the other side of your struggles. Have you been abandoned? Have you been persecuted? Have you been betrayed? Throw up your hands and give God praise because there's triumph on the other side of your struggles. And there's triumph on the other side of your struggles when we allow Jesus to enter in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So should we, how should we, as believers, respond when Jesus enters our lives? Number one, there should be a sense of gratitude and joy. Number two, there should be a feeling of triumph yes. and victory. Yes. Number three, there should be an atmosphere of worship yes. and an atmosphere of submission. Yes. And I just want to encourage you, as Jesus enters in, there's triumph on the other side. Yes. Of your struggles. Yes. Yes. The doors of the church are open. Yes. 